You're watching WRKM Channel 22, number one in the region. The following WRKM broadcast for mature audiences only. There will be some apologies. There will be some analysis. I will also be an asshole. It's a AAA show. It's what you've come to expect from this one in darkness. I will start with the first apology. I'm sorry I was away. I had to go live a life. Go scouting around the world. Take a temperature check. But I'm back now with some fresh perspectives. Are you interested? No? You didn't even notice I was gone? Well, fuck you too. I was dreading this day and it's here. Let's see if I still remember how to do this. It's Saturday night. Let's have a talk so we can't have when the sun is up. And that's why I'll never join a secret society. It always starts cool. It always starts like, oh, a bunch of bros hanging out. And eventually something goes up your ass. You know, like I'm not, not into that. Not that I'm against putting people putting things up their ass. Like if you want to do that, it's fine. But just not for me. That's why I wouldn't join a secret society, I think. Like having been away, doing some research, it always leads to something going up your ass. And I'm not into that. Good evening. I'm Ralph Nemertes and this will end in darkness. We're back. We're back. Yay. Only, uh, I forgot which number it is on this one. Uh, we're going to have the soundboard up. Perfect. Damn. Had I known. No, that's the other thing. No. That, that, you know, you should maybe add a laugh track to the show. There we go. We're back. I'm shocked, too. I, too, thought I had given up on my dreams of internet fate, internet fame. See? It's been too long. Don't know how to speak into a microphone anymore, Bobby. But as I've been out there, living a life, taking in inventory of the, the thoughts of the world, the temperature check. You know, typically on this show, we talk about weird people. That's something I have thoroughly enjoyed. I loved talking about the political party that was blaming witchcraft on their recent loss. I loved talking about the lady who sued for her husband's semen rights. These are the weird people we talk about. And sometimes in talking about solely just those people, you start to forget that some everyday people are fucking weird. And there is no better time to take inventory of that thought and that concept and belief than a United States election. Always great. Always great. And I I want to do this publicly because I feel as a star of WRKM, as a man with a platform, and an Instagram, a Facebook, a Twitter, various platforms that have very little follow count. I still am responsible for how I use those platforms. I am still very responsible for the ideas, the concepts, the reels, and memes I share. And... I, I, I do owe 
an apology to a certain group of people who, quite frankly, are having a hard time out there. They are, they feel victimized. They feel that no one's taking their concerns seriously and that the world is against them. And I I didn't think about that when I did the things I'm going to apologize for. I didn't think about that. Sometimes I don't think, you know, I had to fix the mic there for those listening. So that's why a little weirdness with the audio. Um, that's how long it's been. I don't even know how to set my own microphone anymore. Maybe I'm past my prime, 90 episodes. Maybe we'll never get it back. Maybe the next, the next 90 will just be shittier and shittier. I can live with that. Bobby can't. Bobby will leave and go to another show. And I know he's already trying to, and I'm fine with that. I want him to go be on other shows. Like Ari Gold's assistant in season two of Entourage. She left him to go to work for James Cameron. Oh, shit. See? Look at that. Headphone wire. But yes. I want you to find your James Cameron, Bobby. And not stick around this filth. This shit show. This horribly run program on WRKM. Though, I would make the case, if they paid me money, I could afford employees. But, let me not lose sight of why we're here. I owe an apology. And apologies are serious. You have to mean them. You can't just say them. You have to really put in the work. And I've been putting in the work since this happened. Um, That was part of my hiatus. You know, I... I had to realize that my words and my treatment of certain groups, my thoughts about them, my conspiracies about them, I have to, I I really, I have to take ownership. And that's something every man should learn to do is take ownership. So I am going to take ownership tonight. Okay, it will not be easy, but I will do it because I have a platform and there's people who watch this show. Still, I still see you on um, spot. Uh, was it Spotify for podcasters? I still see the numbers going up. Thank you for catching us so late. Sorry, we didn't have anything new to say. We're back. Sorry, see, I'm apologizing all over the place here. Um, so reward me, okay? Doing the fucking work, reward me. I'm doing this without therapy. Come on, man. Like, fucking reward me. Though I probably should make a call on that eventually and make the jump. That's an apology, I guess, for other people. But I do owe a certain group an apology. And it's just, you know, I try really hard, you know, to be the best person I can be. I know in my past I haven't. You know, I, I I know that there are people out there who have stories about me being an asshole to them, and they're right. You know, they're right. I did say that I think Helen Keller was kind of faking it. I said that once. Am I not allowed to get one wrong? Why are MOB batters the only one that get three strikes, you're out? But what no one ever points out in three strikes, you're out is guys get multiple at-bats. So you have to give chances. Did I just change the paradigm on that cliche? I did. Well, this one in darkness. But I have said some things. I've had some thoughts. You know, I did say Washington Heights. Smells like rice and beans and teen pregnancy. I can say that because I'm Puerto Rican, but I should not have said it because it it insults my Dominican brethren, and that's not cool because I love them sometimes, and I apologize for that. I will not apologize for the Helen Keller point because she wrote books. 
You're going to tell me someone who's deaf, dumb, and mute wrote books? One of those three things was not like the other. You get what I mean? I think she had blurry eyesight, but I don't know if she was fully blind. Miracle worker my ass. More like the pretty good worker, okay? Just. Once again, maybe, hey, listen. Maybe that's my sexism that I don't even know I have. That I can't believe that a deaf, dumb, and blind woman can write books. Hey, maybe that's on me, okay? I'm doing the work, okay? I'm doing the work. That's not what I'm here to apologize for. It's not. A serious thing happened a few months ago that I did not take seriously. Well, at, f- at first I did. Then when people got really emotional about it, I started to make jokes about it. So, But I did not take seriously the first assassination attempt of Donald Trump. I did not take it seriously. Let me, and I'm, and I'm happy we don't have the stories I shared that day because I just think that'd be best, you know, so we can all move on. The first thing I put up was, well, hand him the election, he won. Innocent enough, I thought. I thought that that was a, a clear point. He had the sympathy vote now. They tried to kill this man. And any Hollywood ending, the guy who almost gets shot, tends to win in the end in the third act. This is his second act heat. So I thought he won. The election's over. That's what I thought immediately after the first assassination. Then it was brought to my attention by several people that this was no laughing matter. Though, I had not said anything funny. And I blame this show. And I blame WRKM, actually. I think they should take some fucking blame on this because they've allowed me to say whatever I want that was funny on this microphone. So now people think I'm a clown. And now I'm not capable of empathy. But I am. And that's what this apology is all about. A guy got nicked in the ear, like, could have been his dome, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Now, was that to the grace of God or a guy being a terrible shot? I don't know. So I won't, we won't relitigate that because that's not what I'm here to do. Okay. I'm taking it seriously. I'm doing the work. I realized that in my jokes about Trump, I had offended, and this is not that day, this is leading up to that day, so I understand now how my prior behavior allowed people to assume I was making light of his tragedy, and, you know, I apologize to the people who felt that I did not take it seriously that because their daddy was not around or mostly unavailable that their surrogate daddy gets shot and I dare not take it seriously. I'm sorry. I I forgot how much he meant to people. There are men out there, God bless them, who's, let's be honest here, or wayward, or looking for some kind of male to lead them and show them how to be a man. The way most fathers fail to do, apparently, over the past few years, hence the single family homes. Whether they were there or not, because even if your father is there, sometimes he's emotionally unavailable and that's irrelevant. The physicality of presence means nothing when the absence of maturity Mental support, spiritual support, emotional support is lacking. You might as well not be there. But, but, and I, and I want to be, want to be clear here. I, I did not take 
it seriously how people felt about Donald Trump. I did not take it seriously that people wanted to pick up arms for Donald Trump. Not my words. That people thought it was an attack on all conservatives. Not my words. That people felt that the Dems had gone too far. Not my word. Not my words. They never said that. Never said any of that. These are just quotes of the people I've offended. And part of owning your accountability is acknowledging how you've hurt people. Because instead of hearing those cries and instead of understanding that people were seriously hurt by the events that occurred, I proceeded to make jokes about it. Because I do what the fuck I want. I'm supposed to watch my mouth because you're fucking idolizing a dude who doesn't even know you? That's strange. That's bizarre. Who does that? Not me. No one's got to watch their mouth around me about certain people. I'm Catholic. Talk shit about the Pope. I'll talk shit about him with you. Of course, parents are always off limits. That's always, that's always how I feel about it. But I was insensitive. And I apologized. I'm sorry. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an important figure for a lot of people. And I don't know why that is. Why him particularly? But I think I can figure it out if I explored it a little bit. I mean, you look at his supporters... What you gather is, it's all people afraid of the future. It's all people who are afraid of change. It's all people who feel insecure about their place in society. And it's the same reason why people join churches. It's the same reason why guys are paying $10,000 to join alpha male seminars so they can be told they're a man by another man, which always bizarre to me. Why can't you just be a man? Why does another man have to tell you you're a man? You're a dude. I'm a dude. We're dudes. Hey, we're hanging out. Cool, dudes. But not sure why it is. Paying another dude to tell you you're a dude is strange. But there are also people who are scared of other cultures because they've never met a black person before. They've never met a Haitian before. So I get it. Strong man comes in. Tells you everything's going to be all right. Don't you think about it. I got the best plans, great plans, all great plans. Yeah. Sounds good. Sign me up. I would like to not think about the future. I would like to know that someone's going to take care of it for me. And all my insecurities are justified in which I am scared of other cultures somehow. And I am scared that women have a voice in society. And that, you know, other cultures have a voice in society, even though, you know, I built the society. Should I not take criticism for the thing I built? And if I cannot take criticism, does that make me a good builder? That's a question too. If you build a bad bridge, you build a bad bridge. I can't talk shit about it now. Strange. Strange how they always accuse the left of wanting to censor speech, but it's always them going, don't you criticize that. Don't you dare. It seems to be the red pill space. It seems to be the hypermasculinity space. It even goes as far as the founding fathers. I think people who dick eat the founding fathers are just doing that because their real father was emotionally unavailable. So to them, that's real men, but the heavens forbid you go, hey, these real ass men also did some real ass slavery they get really defensive because you're talking about, hey, leave my dad alone. And forefathers is just like a title. Doesn't make them your real father. Just in case people didn't know that. You know. Just want to make sure people know. But that's society we're in. People are looking for a dad. Elon is looking for his daddy. We even talked about one of the last episodes we were on a hiatus. Elon needs a daddy. Elon's dad threatened to kill himself. Elon didn't keep giving him money. So Elon's paying his dad to be his dad. How is that masculine? 
Sounds kind of weak to me. You got to pay your dad to be your dad. That's fucking lame. But the dad trauma pendulum or saloon doors that I like to, I like doing this, the little saloon door wave. The pendulum thing's not as fun. The saloon door wave is fun. The little saloon doors, they go both ways. On one, on one hand, you can have daddy issues and go, all right, listen, this dude ain't going to be here for me. I got to figure this out on my own. Now I'm going to go figure it out on my own. And I'm going to meet some other dudes and gonna trade tips and I'm going to learn by failing and I'm going to become a person not defined by the failures of my father, but inspired them. I'm going to become great. I'm going to be a cool fucking guy and be a good dad and be a good husband. Just going to be an all around solid citizen. Then there's other dudes who are heavily dictated by the failures of their fathers to where they now have to be the alpha father in their household. It's strange. Strange. They want to go back to a 1950s concept because that that's what their dad lacked. If only he was like the boomer. God, if only I had a boomer dad, you know? How'd that work out for Gen X? We can ask them. They'd be very vocal about it. But that's the game. That's the game I see when I was out there. Because the benefit of being 36 is you now see how all your friends grew up. And not even just your friends. People you happen to know through other people. Certain conversations you have. You can now look at how people were raised. People were brought up. And you can now see the thread lines that make their life what what it is. And some dudes are... Looking for daddy in politics and sports and on YouTube at home. Like they're looking to like feel some kind of validation. They're a man there. Like oh, it's a generation of dudes looking for their fathers. And it's really weird. And I get it because I've been there myself for a brief time. Grew without one. Had to figure it out on my own. But yet somehow in all that, I didn't take that strength to think that I was above people, to think that I don't help the people who are weak and marginalized, that my responsibility as a quote unquote masculine male is not only to be the good husband, the good son, the good brother, but the good person in my community, or at least try to be, even when I'm joking around, even when I'm saying just the crit the not critical, the cynicism I tend to joke around with on here, you know? But there is a pendulum swing. For those other guys, everything they do is, my dad did this, so I will do the other thing. My dad was out screwing a bunch of women and not taking care of my mom, so now I will have a stay-at-home wife. And I know, like, 15 dudes who are trying to aim at having stay-at-home wives, and I'm like, in this economy? Are you fucking serious? That's crazy. You can't afford that. You can't, your trauma is making you broke. That's crazy. But it's happening. Because some people can't get past not having a dad. And this is the dadless election, I guess. Because that's how it felt. When that dude got shot. A bunch of dudes who like, their, their, their dad got hit. And I can expect it from Barron. I can respect it from Donald Trump Jr. That's his actual dad. I I would expect him to be quite emotional about it. But there were far too many dudes out there that were way too emotional about it. And it's like, that's kind of lame. It's kind of lame. But part of doing the work is realizing some people are lame. Well, you are not, so I must apologize. And I will, do, I will apologize. And I do apologize. It's the right thing to do. Apologize. That's what I do. I know what I'm up to. I know what it takes to be a good person. I'm going to apologize. But did, did I think it was kind of comical? 
that he was shot by a registered Republican? Yes. Yes. That he was shot again or attempted to be shot again by someone who's a huge Tulsi Gabbard fan? Yes. It is kind of funny because their own are trying to kill them. But they're blaming it on liberals. I guess the question I'd ask is who hired these men? But once again, I don't want to turn this into a conspiracy because it was a deep tragedy. Um, And some people lost people on that day. Some people lost people. Particularly one woman lost her husband. So if anything, my I would apologize to her for any joke I made because her husband did pass away and got goddamn, that's rough. At a Trump rally, but goddamn. Not the place I would want to fucking die at, but I mean it's he went down with the ship. He went down with what he believed in. I respect it. God bless. I hope he's in heaven enjoying all the cool stuff that's up there. I hope to meet him someday and go, hey, my bad. I apologize for making jokes about you. Well, I didn't make jokes about him, actually. That's the one person I didn't make jokes about. The actual person that died. Didn't make jokes about him. So I'm not all bad now, am I? But it's maturity, man. It's maturity. I don't know what else to say. Oh, then I'm sorry that you are in a cult. I'm sorry. Sorry you're in a cult. Sorry you had the IQ of mayonnaise. Sorry that you're obsessed with pedophiles in a very unhealthy way, which I always tell people, the people who are hyper-obsessed with pedophiles tend to be pedophiles because they don't want anyone finding out about them. Isn't it interesting how they always fear monger with the children? Because no one could disagree about the children. No one wants the children to get hurt. So the pedophiles are out to get the children. The gays, quote unquote, are out to get the children. The trans are out to get the children, you know? Whenever a certain group of people want to marginalize another, it's always thinking about the children. Children. Is your child listening to hip hop? You know, it, it's, it's always the kids. One group seems to have a hyper fixation on the kids. It's a little cringe. And listen, I get it. For them, you know, life is hard. Life's an MCU movie. There's a higher level of people out there. It is sinister group out there. And they're coming after you. And they're getting these cool costumes. And they have cool nicknames like Bohemian Grove. And they call themselves interesting code names like Jeffrey Epstein. And it's interesting, you know. They're flying on private jets. They have secret layers. They're out to get you all the time. I understand how fun that can be. And I should have thought about that when I made fun of those people who watch Sounds of Freedom. Like, I, I should have thought about that, but I didn't. I did it. And how Sounds of Freedom, oddly enough, was produced by a pedophile. It's or a guy whose people who he worked for who worked for him to free children in other countries ended up being pedophiles. It's kind of crazy how the pedophiles work in anti-pedophilia groups to get close to children. Does no one peep that? It's amazing how everyone accuses liberals of being pedophiles, but no one talks about the Franklin scandal where Johnny Gosh was trafficked by an RNC member. The Franklin Bank scandal. Look it up. No one talks about that one. Little inconvenient to the narrative. Not the religious, right? The religious people would never be pedophiles. Mm-mm. Not the pastors, not the priest. Nope. Episode 90 really is coming to terms with all the things we've made fun of, and I'm... It's time the chickens came home to roost. And if this is our last show, I get it. I get it. You had a good run. But then you go from these weirdos to these other kids on the left who, it's kind of cute. They're having their Obama moment. 
It's a Gen Z Obama moment. Ain't that quaint? I thought, you know, it was over. I thought we would never get that energy back. And it's not fully back. Like, she's not fully. Like, Kamala doesn't have the full Obama energy. But there's some, there's some of it in there. And it's nice. It's nice. It does reaffirm that Joe Biden is a kingmaker more so than anyone else in the Democratic Party. If she wins, then that, that's why he ha- it has to happen. If she wins, he is now the kingmaker of the DNC, even though the DNC always runs to Obama for his opinion. Boy, they did not fucking get that this time. Um, according to Politico, Obama wanted that Arizona NASA dude, the astronaut, and he's Mark Kelly, yeah, and he's got no personality whatsoever. And he wanted him to be the face of the ticket. And Biden said, fuck you. I'm the one in the White House. I'm going to pick who I want. And he chose Kamala. And think about this now. Let's big picture. Okay. Barack Obama comes out of nowhere. Becomes one of the biggest political stars of our time. But still a black dude in America. So he's going to need a white dude to run with. And he needs a particular white dude. Could it have been any other white dude? Any other white dude, he loses that election. Had to be Joe. Joe just made everyone feel comfortable. And you hear about it in like the White House reports, how he was the one that helped broker a lot of deals for Barack. Because Barack had a real, a real fuck you, take it or leave it attitude. But Joe would go and clean things up and mend the fence. But Joe kingmakered Obama in a way. By just being next to him. And now he might queen maker, the first black president, first black woman president, or first Asian, however you want to look at this woman, the first that. Because at this point, like, I don't know. She's Indian, right? Asian Pacific, Pacific, I, I, I don't know. Whatever that thing is, she'll be the first that. I don't do research. I talk. So essentially, he's got two. He, Joe Biden pulled two first. What white man could ever say? He might be the greatest white man of all time, really. We might have to put him on fucking dollars and shit. We should fucking, every cookout, every Sweet 16, take a moment to think about Joe Biden being the greatest white man ever. Not once, twice. Genius. Did he plan it? I don't know. But even if he didn't, swag. Now, did he know he was doing it when he was doing it? Well, that's... I don't know if he knows what today is. But it's a swag move. And Gen Z gets it. They're like, wait, Papa Joe gave us another one? And another one? God damn it. He's good. Legacy secure. The Trump win wasn't enough. Kamala wins. Guy's greatest of all time. Bar none. Bar none greatest white man of all time. Come on now. Greatest white man since Kennedy. Lyndon B. Johnson? Nah. Nah, I guess not. Because Lyndon probably had Kennedy killed. But... Allegedly, allegedly for his family comes with the fucking woodwork and sues me. But let's go, Joe Biden, greatest white man of all time. It'd be interesting. I like that concept more. But it does say something that in in times of trouble, they ran back to Barack Obama. So here it is. A black man now runs the second political party in the country. That's historic. Hugely historic. Thank you, Joe Biden. Now, some would say I am taking credit from the black dude to give it to the white dude. And that's kind of fucked up. But, but, I have given Barack a lot of props on this show. Okay? No one did drone strikes quite like our boy. Okay? Are you playing with your child on a beautiful afternoon? You're gone. Cold-blooded. He killed Osama Bin Laden, cold-blooded. Come on. He's a killer, man. I get it. I show respect to the Don. I'd kiss the ring if he showed up. I know he'd whack me pretty quickly. 
Maybe that's what happened to his cook at Martha's Vineyard. I don't know. That's what people are saying. See, like Trump, I too can see something on the internet and say it on the microphone. If he can do it, why not me? But it's Gen Z Obama moment. I'm happy about it. Because they deserve to feel this level of hope of, wow, the country could change. In this dark period, we can go to something else. And she's always saying it. Turning the page. And she has turned the page for a lot of people. I saw Joe Rogan praising her the other day, going, whoever's got her prepared is killing it because she killed that debate. Kind of convenient that Donald Trump has a bad debate, second assassination attempt, but I apologize to Ray, so I will not go any further on that. Kind of convenient. But she did great. She gave us some great memes, good faces, good gifts. She's the president we need right now. Because when you look at that debate, Trump has run out of energy. He's run out of the good jokes. He, he's When you start saying they're eating the dogs, eating the cats, it's kind of, wow, we're at desperate shock humor now? Like, this is it? The material's lacking. People have said that about this show for the last 15 episodes. Fair. Can't argue that. Still gonna podcast. You can stick around if you like. But... She, too, offers a level of hope that we haven't had in a long time. And I don't know if that hope is misplaced. I don't know if people are thinking clearly about her policies. I know one policy of hers that I do like, which is Supreme Court policy she's got, where she wants them to be held to federal regulations the way lower-level judges are so we can know who's, who's giving them money, who they're taking money from, whose planes are they flying on, and shit like that. So we can keep them responsible because let's be honest, it's the biggest court, it's the biggest court in all the land. How are we not keeping them to a standard? I, once again, not say fair politics, but I like that policy. I'm into that policy. Is it enough for me to vote for it? More than likely, because I f- do believe the Supreme Court is going to be a huge thing for the next 15 to 20 years, more so now than ever. So we might want to find out who's paying who. And who's influencing who? That might be. That's a good policy. People are feeling some hope there, and I like it. But I have to remind them. Two, two elections of Obama wins gave us a Trump win. And if Trump, in theory, is the worst it can get, who are they going to throw out next time? Because they've got some got some nuts over there. Marjorie Taylor Greene looks like she has a Halloween mask on. Vivek will literally blow whoever's in the room with him at any time. He's one of the great blowjob clowns of our political era. Like, you... He will talk shit about someone in, on one podcast and then praise them in another. He's kind of great. I kind of respect it that I know I'm Indian and I know Ann Coulter says she wouldn't vote for me because I'm Indian, but I will defend Ann Coulter to not vote for me because I'm Indian. That is a interesting move. Lauren Boebert's hot. I mean, let's be honest here. Like, that theater thing... We supported it. Now, could she be president? I don't know. Don't know. Would she be worse than Trump? No. She would just be what if Sarah Palin had won the presidency. And that could be fun for a little bit. Listen, maybe we get a reformer and then we get an entertainment act after a while. You know, just spice it up a little bit. Maybe we, after a serious Kamala term or two, we can then get to the funniness of it all with Lauren Boebert, who's going to be smoking by that time still. So is that sexist? I think so. I apologize. I'm also being an asshole. Unfortunately, I cannot help it. Lauren Boebert brings out the asshole in me. But most conservatives would say I'm being a man. So I only have to apologize to one segment of society, really. That's an easier apology. But... 
Who else could maybe Donald Trump Jr. gives it a shot? Maybe the sequel, you know? No, it's not really the sequel. This is the sequel. It would be like young Sherlock Holmes or like young Indiana Jones, like a spinoff. So maybe, maybe that's not that good. How many spinoffs are actually good? Question we gotta ask ourselves when Donald Trump Jr. goes for it, because he will. Or maybe we're writing the greatest revenge tale of all time. Maybe years from now, it's Baron Trump now. And he's, you know, coming back for revenge. You tried to kill my dad twice. Try to kill me. Don't do that. We're not inciting violence. We're just saying in this action movie of American politics, what if that's his motive? I'm into it. Might have to come out for that one. Might have to come out for that one. I don't know who comes after. But that's always the fear, really. When you look back at the Obama presidency, we ne- we had no idea what was coming in response. Because it was a cool eight years, man. It was a real chill eight years. Except for the recession. That was rough. That was really bad. Then we found out the banks owned everything. And that was unfortunate. And then he didn't end the wars. And that was unfortunate. But he did get us gay marriage, so plus. But. Never got us reparations, though. I don't think he promised that. But I think a lot of people assumed he'd get that. I don't know why. Never mentioned it once. I don't even know if he could even pull that off now. But that's a whole podcast for a different day. But it's good to see the kids excited about something. It's good. At least someone's excited. But I do know that there are a lot of you who aren't excited. A lot of you who are looking at your choices going, this is it? Okay. May I offer a third alternative? And no, I don't mean Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Who also will suck the dick of whoever will make him relevant. That's the part no one pointed out when he joined Trump that he had talked to Kamala first and they offered him nothing. And then he went to Trump. So. Wow, Kennedy's. From Kings to Blowjob Clowns. What a documentary that will make someday. But maybe for 2024, just say fuck it. Say fuck all this. I don't know who's real. I don't know who's fake. But I do know Ralph. And I do know that he doesn't really give a shit about me. And that's why he'll be a great president. And you can write my name in. Rafael Martinez, go ahead. You should write my name in. Because I'm honest. I don't give a shit about you or your problems or anything like that. I will be selling out to the biggest donors. I will be doing whatever the money tells me to do, but at least we'll be honest. I'm not trying to make America great again. I'm not even trying to take us back. I'm trying to just say, fuck it. Let it ride. Maybe, Ralph 2024, maybe it's our time to lose. Bam. Maybe it's our time to lose. We had a good run as a republic. 207 years ain't bad. We've been in American Imperium all across the world. We've overthrown governments. Guatemala, Venezuela, Haiti, the Congo, Iran. A lot of the Middle East, to be fair. We had a good run. We won World War II. That was cool. When we were fighting Nazis. But now they're here. And we're not fighting them, which is weird. Because you would think some rivalries never die, like the Yankees and the Red Sox. But guess we're not that bout it, bout it. But we did some cool shit. We went to the moon, maybe. I think we went to the moon. Some disagree. I apologize for hurting them by saying we went to the moon. They must be furious with me. Please tell me in the comments. We could use the engagement. But maybe it's our time to lose. Hey. Maybe it is China's time to win. We're, we don't have our best people out there. People are believing doctored videos of cats and dogs being eaten. Geese being stolen. 
people are falling for AI gifts. AI memes, AI endorsements. We no longer know what reality is. We're no longer smart enough to to tell what reality is or discern what's real anymore. Maybe we should just say fuck it and give it to the robots and just not care about anything else. Maybe it's our time to lose and let someone else behind the wheel because we've had too much to drink, you know? We've been partying for a long time. We've been snoring coke here and there to keep us alive. To just keep the heart beating. Because heavens forbid we go to sleep. And the blood pressure drops. Home. But maybe it's our time to lose. Maybe, you know, we don't have the smartest politicians, the smartest celebrities, the smartest scientists. Maybe, maybe oblivion's not all that bad. We'll be free of responsibility. Won't have to take care of other country anymore. We'll have to look around at each other and go, well, we need to make this work somehow. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. But at least we'll get out of this relationship. At least we'll be able to divorce peacefully while we're focusing on our mutual or our own individual needs but our mutual discontentment with one another. Maybe it's time the Constitution got a rewrite. We had it for a long time. The Founding Fathers kind of left it to us to do it. Like, hey, have fun with that. We got it started. It's your fucking responsibility now. Those Founding Fathers, everyone seems to idolize want to fossilize their memory and their ideas also had some progressive ideas which complex legacies neither side seems to know that one but maybe it's our time to lose and I'm I'm in for it you know America was cool for a while sometimes things go out of fashion can't help that Jordache jeans went away and then Jordache jeans came back. Skechers went away. Then Skechers came back. Fubu, gone. I, don't, I might start wearing Fubu to bring Fubu back. Or we get taken over by another bigger corporation and they keep our brand alive because there's still a small group of people who believe in it. Like Old Navy. Maybe. You know? Or, you know, Ring of Honor, if you're a wrestling fan. That's an inside joke. Most of them got it. Maybe it's our time to lose, and I'm I'm into it. We had a good run. As long as we could do this peacefully, we just die peacefully, that'd be nice. Other republics, you know, they didn't make it as far as we did. We did it, man. We set the standard. Now it's time to retire. Let the new kids take it. The Jordan years are over. We're no longer winning the NBA Finals. We're not even making it to the playoffs. Yeah, we got to fire the GM. I don't know. Maybe we deserve to lose. We never contemplated the things we've done. I don't know. I don't know. But if you vote for me, that's what I can give you. An easy out. I could... Take away all the pain. I can be your hero, baby. I can take away the pain. I'm not I'm not promising I'll stand by you forever.
I forgot the fourth lyric, and I'm fine with that. Because I promised you nothing but the end. And the end can be beautiful. It could have fireworks. It can be bright. It could be bold. It could have bombastic vanity. You can go out beautiful and young before the wrinkles start to show. Because they're starting. We got crow's feet now. It's time. We're holding on by Botox. Not as bad as Laura Loomer's Botox, but you understand what I mean? Or whatever the fuck she did to her face. But we're that. You know what? We're Laura Loomer. We're Laura Loomer's face. And maybe it's our time to lose. Because that's terrible. You know? Rafi Martinez, 2024. Maybe it's our time to lose. Vote for me. Maybe we'll do a political ad. I don't know. But fuck. Whatever comes next. I think we all know how that's going to end. <laughs>